Hello friends, uh, we have been attempting to understand uh, the framework that is rendered by the thermodynamics. So in the previous lectures, particularly when we talked about what thermodynamics means, we saw that thermodynamic it attempts to relate the work done and the energy transfer. It attempts to view work done as a form of energy transfer. So that is what we have been attempting to understand. We have been trying to express the work done and energy transfer in a single framework. So for that, in the previous lecture, we considered a simple system, particularly or rather an adiabatic system. Of course, in the context of thermodynamics, simple system means different. Our simple system is significantly different from uh, an adiabatic system. So now, in the previous lecture, we considered as adiabatic system wherein some amount of work was done on the system. So we considered a system which did not allow the heat to pass through it, but nevertheless, a work was done on the system. So because of this work, the system changed from one state to another. And we saw there are two ways of expressing this change in the state. One is considering the microscopic state of all the individual entities that constitute a system or introduce a new parameter, a new variable, a new thermodynamic variable and then discuss the change in the state of the system based on this thermodynamic variable. And this thermodynamic variable we refer to it as the internal energy. So when we do a work on a system, what happens is when you see when you do a work on the system and there is a change in the state particularly in this case the adiabatic system and there is a change in the state and the way the change in the state manifests itself is the change by increasing or decreasing the temperature so there is a change in the temperature that means the system has changed from one state to another and to describe this change in state we introduce the term internal energy and this internal energy or the work it translates to change in the internal energy and we saw there are particular uh, specific conventions associated with the work meaning the work when it is done by the system and when the work is done on the system so depending on how the work is performed we need to adapt a specific convention so we saw that in the previous lecture when the work is done by the system then despite the system losing its energy the overall work is considered to be positive so whenever a work is done by the system despite the loss of energy it is treated as positive now when the work is done on the system even though it is possible that the energy is gained by the system still the work is treated as negative the reason for this convention is because the work in conventional or in regular terms is defined as the product of force and displacement and now when we replace the force with pressure correspondingly the displacement will be replaced with volume and we are in the framework of thermodynamics or in the framework of uh, the systems that we are considering we saw that uh, the change in the volume is possible when there is a change in pressure and therefore when we replace this displacement with change in the pressure so this is how a, a generalized expression for works looks like and do we hear for our simplistic understanding can be treated as the change in the volume particularly the difference in the volume between the final state and the initial state now when the work is done by the system the final state volume is greater than that of the initial state so that means despite the energy being expended by the uh, system when the work is done by the system since the end volume is greater than the initial volume so that means this term here was going to be positive and therefore this relation ultimately makes the work done by the system positive on the other hand when the work is done on the system then this dv term is going to be negative because the volume the initial volume will be greater than the final volume and because of this we have that despite the energy being expended by the system when the system does the work the work is quantified or the work is treated as a negative variable so this is something that we saw in the previous lecture now in addition to that when we consider this internal energy that is the change in the internal energy delta u when a work is done on the system because of this convention we saw this expression it looks something like this that is even though it is the initial uh, I mean, the final internal energy the difference between the final and the initial internal energies 
given that because of this convention here we need to have a negative sign before this difference it means that whenever your system does a work so the work is done by the system it means the energy is being expended so the internal energy 2 will be less than that of the internal energy 1 and then you substitute that ultimately you will be ending up so but for this negative sign here you will be ending up with positive work so let me repeat now the, the way we represent or the way we quantify the work done with in accordance with the convention is in this form now for our for our uh, sake of discussion let us assume that this negative sign is not there now the work is done by the system so we assume that the negative sign is not there and we consider a, a situation wherein the work is done by the system so when the work is done by the system then the internal energy is reduced and the u2 will be less than u1 so that means u2 minus u1 will be less than 0 so it will be essentially negative so what it means that is that the work is essentially negative so what we have is a contradiction without the negative sign when we just consider the change in the internal energy what we end up with is the work done by the system is negative so therefore this inter this negative sign here needs to be present in order to ensure that the convention and the formulation of the work is consistent so whenever we express the work done by the system or work done on the system in terms of the change in the internal energy even though the simplest way of representing is the difference between the internal energy the final internal energy and the initial internal energy we need to include the negative sign before it in order to be consistent now this expression this way of writing the work done is minus u2 minus the final internal energy and the initial internal energy which is nothing but u so it can be so this term here is nothing but the delta u so if you write it if you consider it uh, consider this expression it can also be written that delta u is minus of the work done so change in the internal energy which is nothing but the final internal energy and the uh, difference between the final internal energy and the initial internal energy is nothing but the negative of the work done all i am doing is taking the negative sign here bringing it to here now if you consider the infinitesimal change in the internal energy not the overall change in the internal energy that is u2 and u1 just the infinitesimal change in the internal energy this expression here can be written as delta w and du now here this delta represents or it indicates that this w here is a path function so we saw in the previous lecture that the work done is not unlike the other temperature or volume the other thermodynamic variables that we have considered the work done is a path function so the uh, conventional expression for the work done is this so there is a change in the volume that is associated with work done and if you assume a system wherein you are doing your work and there is a change in volume from v1 to v2 the overall work done is given in this format and uh, we saw that uh, there are two ways of uh, categorizing or identifying the given variable if the variable is a state variable or path variable now if you consider this description of the work done you see that in order to quantify the work done you need to know about the history of the system so therefore you can right away say that the work done is a path variable whereas in case of state variable all you need to know is the current state of the system you do not worry about the history of the system where the system has been or where the system is moving towards now a graphical way of representing it we saw in the previous lecture that if we assume the pressure to be constant and only as in this case only the volume is changing the system is in, sta in the state in the initial state let us say that and it assumes a volume of v1 and if it moves towards the volume v2 which is here again the pressure is assumed to be constant v2 now if this change in the state is direct then this expression means we are considering the area under this rectangle which is nothing but p minus v2 or p into v2 minus v1 so p into delta v when the transition from v1 state to v1 state uh, v2 state is direct then all we need to consider in order to calculate the work done is the area under the rectangle now if the system takes a detour then 
the area under the curve increases that means the work done also has increased even though the initial and the final point remain the same since the path taken is different the work done increases so since the work done depends on the path taken by the system to reach from one state to another state it mean or uh, it means uh, that the given variable is path variable so whenever you have a variable that depends on the path taken by the system to reach one state to another state then that particular variable is the or that variable we refer to them uh, that as the path variable so these are the things we saw in the previous lecture now let us render the same concentration and see if the internal energy if, if it is the state variable or path variable so we saw that the way we represent or the way we talk about the inter internal energy the way we introduce the internal energy is whenever a work is done on the system and there is a change in state we introduce internal energy to describe the change in state so therefore to describe a particular state of the system we have to attribute to a particular variable and that variable is the internal energy so whenever we want to quantify the internal energy we need not worry about the history of the system so we need not talk about the previous state of the system or the initial or the, the state that it is moving towards or state it is currently in so internal energy this talks about the state or it this considers the state that the system is in it does not worry about the history of the system so if you render such a consideration then the internal energy is a state variable so what we have is the combination of the internal energy that is u2 minus of u2 minus u1 gives us these two are the state variable the combination of two state variable gives us a path variable so we have our minus sign here so we have on the right hand side is two state variables the reason we know that it, these are state variables is because in order to quantify them in order to express them we need not know about the previous state of the system unlike work wherein we need to know to quantify them we need to know the two states of the system the internal energy we need not know to, con to con quantify or to express the internal energy we need not know the two states of the system so we have on the one hand a path variable a path function which is being quantified by or which is being expressed in terms of the state variable now in the previous or in all this consideration what the system that we have considered involves a lack of transfer of the temperature so what we have considered is an adiabatic system and there is no transfer of energy and the only input we are providing is the work done now the work done on the system it changes the internal energy so again we need to have this minus here and the change in the internal energy is manifested in the form of increase in temperature so we do our work and we express it in terms of internal energy however the way we observe this change in the internal energy is through the change in the temperature so we observe that the system has changed the state because there is a change in temperature so this change in temperature is also possible we can introduce or we can change the temperature of the system not only by doing work but also by introducing or by allowing certain amount of heat energy to pass through the system so the same effect on a system that is achieved by a particular amount of work being done on the system can be achieved through allowing the heat to pass into the system supposing we consider an adiabatic system where the work done increase of the temperature to t2 to t1 so like from t1 the temperature has increased to t2 because of the work done on the system now the same change in the temperature is also possible when we allow the heat to pass through it so when we allow a specific amount of heat to pass through the system we will be able to achieve the same amount of change in the temperature so when we say achieve the same amount of change in the temperature what it essentially means is that we are now able to achieve the same amount of change in the state of the system so essentially what we are doing is we are relaxing the adiabatic nature of the system now 
So initially we consider adiabatic nature of the system. So that means the energy is not allowed to flow out of the system or into the system. Now we are relaxing it. So essentially what now we have is just a closed system. And this closed system allows the heat to pass through it. The amount of heat that we are allowing to pass through the system is such a way that we are now able to achieve the same amount of temperature change that we achieved by doing the work on the system. So we are doing, we did a specific work on the adiabatic system and we raised the temperature, uh, raised the temperature of the system delta T by changing the internal energy of the system. Now instead of doing the work, we are introducing heat energy and thereby changing the temperature of the system. Now when the change in the temperature of the system, a variable that we observe, the variable we can measure, when that change in the temper temperature of the system is the same. So delta T that is achieved by work done is equivalent to the delta T that is achieved by the amount of heat that is that we have allowed into the system. Then what essentially we have achieved is the delta T has achieved the same amount of change in the internal energy or rather the delta or the Q, the heat that we have introduced into the system has now achieved the same amount of change in the internal energy as the work has done. However, we should note that the heat energy when it is introduced into the system, it increases the internal energy of the system. So therefore, the convention is whenever the heat energy of other matter any energy that is fed into the system, if it is fed into the system, then it is treated as positive. And if it is let out of the system, if it is let out, then it is treated as negative. So when you feed in the uh, energy into the system, when you uh, the, the heat energy is passes, passes into the system, then this uh, energy is treated as positive, the heat energy is treated as positive the amount of heat is treated as positive while the heat when it is let out by the system it is moved away uh, from the system or it moves out of the system it is treated as negative so based on this convention when the heat is allowed into the system then correspondingly what happens is that internal energy u2 becomes greater than the internal or the previous internal energy u1 so that means the q will be the amount of heat that is fed into the system that changes the internal energy can be expressed as u2 minus u1. So essentially what we now have achieved is we have now achieved the same change in the state of the system that is quantified by delta u which is nothing but the difference between the final internal energy and the initial internal energy. But now since our convention states that when the heat passes into the system the internal energy or it is treated as positive then we can express the heat in terms of the internal energy in this form. Now when you compare it with the change in the internal energy with respect to work because of the convention we have a minus sign before. So there is a difference that is introduced because of the convention here. So since we treat the heat into the system as positive it is expressed as the difference between final internal energy and the initial internal energy primarily because the final internal energy when heat is enters into the system is higher than the heat that exists or rather the internal energy that existed before the heat entered into the system and therefore the heat q is positive just when you consider the difference between final and initial internal energy now when the heat moves out of the system it means the final internal energy is less than the initial internal energy but through this description alone through this definition alone you will be able to uh, you will be able to uh, be consistent with this particular convention here so your description is consistent with the convention and this minus sign here allows your description to be consistent with the convention when we are expressing the change in the internal energy or when we are relating the change in the internal energy in terms of work now Similar to the work, the Q here, we need to know if the Q here is a path variable or a state variable. Again, we go back to our criteria that whenever to describe a variable, you need to know the history 
of the state or the history of the system then that particular variable is a path variable now if you consider this description of the heat here if you consider this particular description of the heat you need to know the current state and also the previous state of the system that in this expression is given in terms of the internal energy so similar to the work done here even though there is a negative sign involved the overall description is more or less the same here we have a difference between the final internal energy and the internal uh, uh, initial internal energy with a negative sign here and the description is more or less the same but without the negative sign in case of the description of heat q but all the rest remain the same so therefore similar to the work done the heat that is entering or that is being let out by the system is also a path variable so what we essentially have is again we have we, we have introduced a change in the state of the system by allowing a specific amount of heat to pass through the system and this heat which is a function of the or which is a variable that is dependent on the initial and the final state of the system that is described based on this internal energy we refer to them or we treat them as a path variable so internal energy it combines to give a, which is nothing but a state variable it combines to give a path variable so we have considered two system one system that is adiabatic that does not allow the heat to pass through and uh, the other system which allows the heat to pass through so we have considered two systems adiabatic and a closed system and here we considered the work done and here we have considered the amount of heat to pass through the we have allowed a specific amount of heat to pass through the system now both work done and the amount of heat to all that is being allowed to pass through the system they establish the same amount or same kind of change or specifically same change in the system so this change is quantified by the change in the internal energy that is u2 minus u1 now the change in the internal energy that is being achieved by the work is expressed in this manner we saw it in the previous slides and when you bring this here so the delta of u is nothing but minus q or rather so whatever what essentially we have is when you consider the first case here the initial or the first case here the change in the internal energy when we relate it to the work is of this form and when you bring the minus sign here the delta u is nothing but minus of the work done and again this is to be consistent with the actual convention and we saw the same amount of delta u can be achieved when you introduce a specific amount of heat supposing the work done and the heat introduced into the system they do not if they do not cancel out each other if the change in the internal energy that is brought about by the work done is different from the change in the internal energy that is brought about by the introduction of heat then the overall change in the internal energy the overall change in the internal energy overall will be nothing but the change in the internal energy because of the work done plus the change in the internal energy because of the input of heat so ultimately the overall change in the internal energy would be minus w plus q if you rearrange it you will end up with the overall change in the internal energy will be q minus w so what we essentially have done is so far we have treated or considered two separate systems we have achieved a change in the state of the system by allowing the system to do some work and similarly we have considered a separate system we have also achieved a change in the state of the system by heat to pass through so in one case the work is done on by the system and the other case the heat or the work is done on the system and in the other case the heat is allowed to pass through the system now let us if you combine these two aspects if you combine if you consider a system a closed system where there is a work done on the system and the heat is allowed to pass through it so you have a combination of the heat transfer 
and also heat transfer is nothing but the energy transfer and work done on the system so when you combine these two there is a resultant change in the internal energy because of this combination of heat input and the work done on the system and this change in the internal energy because of the heat input and the work done on the system is expressed in this manner and this is nothing but the first law of thermodynamics so what first law of thermodynamics we if you consider the setup that is assumed in the first law of thermodynamics is a closed system that allows both work to be done on the system and to the heat to be passed through the system and now in combination of these two because of the work done and also the heat that is passed through the system that is allowed to pass through the system whatever resultant internal energy occurs or whatever resultant change in the state of the system occurs is what is being expressed in the first law of thermodynamics and if you look closely the first law of thermodynamics it rather it it um, and it describes the overall subject of thermodynamics the first law of thermodynamics rather it, it rather in a concise manner it gives us the idea of, of the overall uh, framework of the the subject of thermodynamics so what i mean by that is if you uh, the, in the beginning of the lecture we saw that uh, the thermodynamics gives us a framework to relate the work done and the energy transfer that is essentially what we see in the first law of thermodynamics we have the heat transfer and we have the work done that is on, that is work that is being done on the system so you now have an equation you now have an expression that relates the work done on the system and the heat that is being transferred into the system and that is related to the change in the internal energy or to put it in simpler terms a simpler terms a change in the state of the system so we, we now are able to combine work and the energy transfer in a single expression and related to the change in the state of the system we are now able to quantify the work done and the heat transfer so if we are able to subsequent in subsequent um, or in few minutes or maybe in the subsequent lecture we will be able to express both the heat transfer and the work done in specific uh, using specific variables and if we are able to do that what essentially we are doing is we are expressing the work done and the heat and then we are translating it to change in the state of the system so essentially the whole of the thermodynamics the whole idea of thermodynamics is being expressed in the first law of thermodynamics as it relates work done what we mean by relating work done and uh, heat, heat transfer is because when we relate some two different variables or two different function in the same expression it means that we are treating it as uh inter, inter or rather more than interdependent or something that is uh, replaceable so what we are essentially doing by this first law is we are essentially treating work as a form of energy transfer so that is what is being done in the first law of thermodynamics even though if you look closely we are talking in terms of uh, internal energy we have considered two different system and now we have considered a third system where you you have a work done and the heat is being introduced apart from all this if you take uh, if you um if you take a step back and look holistically what is being uh, done in the first law of thermodynamics is that we are relating work done and energy transfer in a single expression that means we are treating work done in the form as the energy transfer so that is what the first law of thermodynamics is all about now if you assume that if we assume that the overall this particular term this overall change in the internal energy is zero if you assume that the overall change in the internal energy is zero then what we have is the heat that is fed into the system is equal to the work done on the system so essentially what we have is when we assume that the change in the internal energy is zero then all that we have is the heat that we feed into the system is now being completely changed into work so the energy transfer is being equated to that of the work done so that is also that is what we mean by the when we say the overall concept of thermodynamics is being uh, concisely presented in the first law of thermodynamics that is what that is all what we, we mean that is when we ignore or when we assume the change in the internal energy is zero we are essentially equating the heat transfer to work done we are essentially equating heat or the energy energy transfer to work done so it is one corollary of the first law of thermodynamics the second corollary is that if you bring this term here then the heat that is fed into the system work done on the system minus the overall change in the internal energy 
is zero. So what we mean by that is, so you are introducing some amount of energy and that energy is being spent in two ways that is known to us. That is, one is the one form of energy is being spent or being translated into work. The other form of energy is being spent in changing the state of the system. So there are two specific corollaries of the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics that is the change in the internal energy of the system. The overall uh, we will now consider or stick with the set setup where we are simultaneously introducing the heat and the work is done on the system. So in that case this is what the first law of thermodynamics appears like. Now there are two important corollary to two important deductions that we can make. One is when there is no change in the internal energy then whatever heat input that we feed will be completely transferred into the work done. So this, so there is a complete transfer of heat or the energy to work. Now the work again can be also be translated the work or it generates work generates a specific or a specific quantity of energy. So again, so this is one corollary or one deduction we can make from the first law of thermodynamics. Secondly, if we rearrange these terms, the energy input that we feed into the system, it, it is being used in two forms that is either it is being used to do the work or it is or uh, in this case the energy input that we feed into the system, it is being consumed in two forms that is the work done on the system and the change in the internal energy of the system. So there is no amount of energy input that is unaccounted for. Every energy input that you feed. So every energy that you feed into the system is accounted for through the work and the change in the state of the system. So the energy that you feed into the system either it goes into doing the work or it goes into changing the state of the system or like in this case it some part of it goes to doing the work on the system and some part of it goes to changing the state of the system. So this detection or this corollary they are based on this corollary. You can say that the first law of thermodynamics is nothing but a law that is a form of conservation of energy. So you are giving or you are feeding a specific amount of energy into the system and this energy needs to be used by the system in one way or the other. So the system uses this energy either by doing work or changing its states or the combination of doing work and changing its states. So that is all we have in the first law of thermodynamics. So thermodynamics or the first law of thermodynamics, it gives us a hint of what the whole thermodynamics is all about, meaning it relates work and energy transfer. And if you assume that there is no change in the state, it directly translates the energy to work or work to energy. That is the first corollary. The second detection that we can make or second understanding that we can make from the first law of thermodynamics is that when you have the system wherein an energy is fed into it and you allow the system to work, this energy that is being fed into it, we know how this energy is being spent. One, it is being spent as the combination of change in the state of the system and the work done by the system or it can be used exclusively to do some work as in this case or if there is no as in this case or if there is no work possible then it will be exclusively used to do or includes to change the state of the system. So this, so there are two ways these energies can be spent. So this is the first way that is all of the energy is being translated into work done. So it means there is no change in the internal energy of the system. Now when you consider a setup where you do not allow the system to do any work. So you are constructing a system in such a way that you do not allow the system to do any work but you, are, you keep on feeding the heat into the system. So what it means is that, so the way we can restrict the system from doing any work is by not allowing the volume to change. So the dv or the change in the volume is zero. So we restrict our system in such a way that we do not allow it to do any work meaning we restrict uh, we do not allow the uh, system to change its volume. So it means by description if we could recollect so this is our uh, classical definition or the way we describe the work. So that means we are not allowing the system to do any work and we, uh, from first law of thermodynamics we can see that all the heat input that we give is being translated to the change in the internal energy of the system. So 
under constant volume what we essentially have is we do not allow the system to do any work and therefore all the input all the energy input that you feed into the system it's being used completely by the system to change its states which is nothing which can be quantified by the difference in the internal energy and this expression we saw when we considered an open system wherein all the heat is being translated or being used to change in the temperature of the system so the first law of thermodynamic is quite uh, potent or it's, it gives us a lot of information one of the information is that it helps us understand or it helps us consider both work and energy in a single framework and secondly it helps us understand where the energy that we feed in goes when you input a specific amount of heat energy in a system secondly you can also talk in terms of work where the work that you do goes when you feed in or when you do a specific work on the system so this work either it will go in producing energy or it will go in changing the chain or changing the state of the system again changing the internal energy of the system or or the combination of these two it will go both in uh, introducing or in creating or in um, the energy transfer in producing heat energy and also in changing the state of the system so this is what the understanding of first law of thermodynamics gives us so it helps us account for the energy and also you since this being a mathematical expression you can also talk in terms of work it also helps us account for the work that is done on the system now again depending on the system you consider you can reduce or simplify this first law of thermodynamics and you will be able to relate the heat directly to the change in internal energy or work directly to change in the internal energy so this all depends on the system that you are considered and the first law of thermodynamics considers a generalized system where we allow the work to be done and allow the heat to pass through the system now so these terms that is the internal energy work and the heat transfer we saw these two terms here are path variables or path functions because they depend that on they are dependent on or the way they are quantified is by considering the different states of the previous state and the initial state of the system however this here is the state variable or state function now what we have so far not been done or talked about is we have not talked about the change in the internal energy in terms of other fundamental variables like temperature and pressure temperature pressure and volume and since we have already established that volume is a dependent variable when you consider uh, temperature and pressure so it is possible that we can instead of uh, pressure we can also consider temperature and volume and we can choose uh, depending on uh, what we treat as independent variable and what we treat as dependent variable so in the combination of temperature pressure and volume two can be chosen as the independent variable and one can be treated as the dependent variable now in this case for, for this instance since we have the heat that brings about a change in the temperature and the work that brings about the change in the volume let us consider the temperature and volume to be two uh, independent variables or two variables that are or uh, that uh, govern the overall change in the state of the system when we allow when we feed specific amount of heat into the system and if work is done on the system so instead of what we want to do is instead of talking the change in the uh, state of the system in terms of internal energy in terms of work done in terms of um, particularly in terms of uh, the path variables like the heat energy and the work done let us consider or let us try to express the change in the internal energy or the change in the state of the system in terms of the state variables so what we essentially would want to do is we want to represent the change in the state of the system exclusively based on the state variables so what we have now is we need to express these two in terms of the change in the or uh, considering that the heat brings about a change in the temperature we can assume that the internal energy is dependent on the temperature now what we essentially have is in this expression here this is the first law of thermodynamics so in this expression here we saw that or we can conceive that the heat energy 
brings about a change in the temperature. So whatever heat energy we can uh, feed into the system, it can be measured by through the change in the temperature of the system. So instead of considering the heat as the variable to represent the change in the internal energy, we can also consider the temperature to quantify the internal energy of the system, particularly the change in the internal energy of the system. And similarly, because of the definition, because of our definition or the description of the work, the work done by or on the system can be expressed in terms of the change in the volume of the system. So essentially, the first law, it expresses the change in the state of the system using part variables that is heat energy and work. Now we want to express this change in state or in, in change in the internal energy of the system using state variables like temperature and volume. Now the heat energy it is being realized by us through the change in the temperature. So the heat energy can be expressed in terms of the change in temperature and similarly the work is quantified using the change in the volume. So ultimately what we now have is the internal energy is dependent on or it is a function of temperature and volume. To be more specific, the change in the internal energy is the function of the heat which is again the function of T and work which is the function of volume. So in a simplified manner, we can write that change in the internal energy of the system is now a function of the state variables temperature and volume. Now what we have essentially done is instead of expressing the internal energy of the system in terms of the path variable, we have expressed it in terms of state variable. Now, if you could recollect, the benefit of expressing a state of a system in terms of exclusively in terms of state variables is that we will be able to introduce any number of incremental steps in order to talk about the change in the state of the system. That was uh, something that we dealt in our introduction, introduction module. So when you are able to express a change in the state of the system exclusively in terms of the state variables, you are allowed to introduce any number of intermediate steps. So if you could recollect, we consider a change in the state of the system by considering the change in its temperature and pressure simultaneously. And since treating temperature and pressure simultaneously is quite difficult, we introduce an intermediate step where from, once, uh, from the initial to the intermediate, the temperature was constant and pressure reached the final volume or uh, final value and from the intermediate to final uh, final step or final state, the pressure was constant and temperature reached the ultimate value. This, this is possible because we have translated or we have expressed the state of the system in terms of the state variables. So initially, the internal energy was expressed in terms of the path variable. So expressing it through or the introduction of any intermediate state would collapse our overall consideration. Therefore, we have attempted to express the internal energy in terms of the state variables. Now, if we assume that the internal energy of the system changes from U2 to U1 and the corresponding change in the temperature and volume that brings about this change that is from U2 to U1 is rather a um, bit confusing here. So you have an initial internal energy of the system that is U1 and that changes to U2. Now this change is brought about by combination of work and combination of uh, work and heat energy. Now if I want to talk about the change of the state of the system in terms of work and uh, heat, I cannot simplify this change in any further. I cannot uh, talk about this in any other way except for both work and heat energy are fed into the system simultaneously and this brings about a change from U1 to U, uh, U2. However, if I express U1 as given by or described by T1 and V1 and U2 as described by T2 and V2, considering that T1, V1, T2, V2 along with U1, U2 are state variables, I can introduce an intermediate step in such a way that U1, T1, V1, it moves to an intermediate state of Ua, where the temperature remains constant and the volume has reached its final value 
and from ua it moves to the final state wherein the temperature or the volume now remains constant because it, uh, it has already reached its uh, final state now the temperature is allowed to change so instead of reaching u1 to u2 in a direct step because i have expressed u1 and u2 in terms of the state variables i am now allowed to introduce an intermediate step and because of this intermediate step now i am allowed to change my system step by step first initially assume the temperature to be constant and change the volume first and reach allow the system to reach the final volume and then keep the volume fixed and change the temperature now this way of first of all changing or representing the change in the state of the system using the state variable allows us to introduce the an incremental step and therefore the overall change in the internal energy of the system can be expressed in a simplistic manner so the overall change in the internal energy of the system say du can now be expressed as so we have step 1 that is the temperature is maintained to be constant and the volume changes from v1 to v2 so the change in the internal energy because of the volume and the temperature is maintained to be constant and in the from the intermediate step to the final step we have the temperature that is varying the change in the internal energy because of the temperature and the volume is maintained to be constant so this sort of an expression is possible because i have explained or we have translated the internal energy or express the internal energy in terms of temperature and volume both of these are state variables so this translation helps us simplify the overall change in the internal energy even though both work and heat transfer are occurring simultaneously so we have a system where heat transfer and work are done by the system simultaneously it is occurring in the system it is happening in the system simultaneously but since we have now expressed that change in the state using state variables we are allowed to express it in this simpler form now the overall change in the internal energy which is nothing but u so we can introduce the integrand here so there is a change in the volume from v1 to v2 and we have the change in the internal energy because of the change in the volume and we have a combined to that we have the change in the internal energy because of the temperature so when the temperature is changing the volume is constant and the volume is changing the temperature is constant so we have seen the consideration that is or what is the system that we need to consider to express the first law of thermodynamic in a uh, in a holistic manner and from that we saw different different corollaries of uh, the first law of thermodynamic what it helps us to understand and one corollary is that first law of thermodynamics says it accounts for all the amount of energy that is being introduced into the system so it is uh, more or less it talks about the conservation of energy we have an idea of or where the energy is being used or what the energy be is being used for so it is either being used for uh, to do any work or it is being used to increase the or change the state of the system now so far the uh, first law it talks about it expresses the internal energy in terms of the path variables are path functions so when you have path functions then it is difficult for us to express the change in the internal energy or may um, have a simplified expression for the overall change in the internal energy so therefore we wrote or we described this change in the internal energy in terms of the state variables of temperature and volume and when we do that we are able to introduce an intermediate step and assume constant temperature and constant volume setups and settings and thereby allowing us to have finally a simplistic expression for or a rather a broken down expression for the overall change in the internal energy of the system so this is the overall change in the internal energy of the system so this is the progressive change that leads to the inter overall change and this is expressed in this manner so with this we will be winding up this uh, lecture and we will be um, looking into further on uh, the different aspects that can be or different uh, aspects of the first law of the thermodynamics in the subsequent lecture goodbye